Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll continue with episode 16 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering arrays. So what arrays allow you to do is to create multiple instances of the same data type that line up in memory sequentially together and allows for quick reference and access. So the general way of creating array is defining some type of a data type followed by an array name and then we get to specify some size of array followed by an equal sign and then a curly braces here. And inside the curly braces, we get to initialize our array elements. So this is the general format. So let's go ahead and fill this in so we get a good understanding of how to create an array in C++. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, let's say we wanted to define an array of integers. We can do this by typing int as our data type, followed by an array name. Let's just call it array. Then some size, because arrays are of a fixed size. And when I say size, that's just some number of elements that are going to exist in this array. So if I specify, let's say something easy like 10, that means that there are going to be 10 integers inside of this thing called array that will be reserved by the system for you. So next I can actually set these individual elements inside the array equal to something. And I can do that by hitting the equals and then followed by these curly braces like defined above. And in these curly braces, our initializers will be delimited by a comma. So if I typed in, let's say one, comma two, comma three, comma four, all the way up until I get to 10, this allows me to create an array with 10 elements. The very first element in the array contains one, the second two, the third three, and so on and so forth. And there are actually a few different ways to initialize and or create it arrays. We don't want to forget our semicolon at the end that denotes that we're at the end of a statement. So let's actually show a different way of initializing an array. You can also do int. Again, I'll call this array and use a size of 10. But this time, there are a few ways to initialize and or create an array. One other way is if I did int array, very much similar to what I did above here, but I will just take this and copy it down below. Now this is also valid as well because you initialize 10 different numbers inside of this array. That way the compiler knows that you want to create an array with 10 different elements. So it will automatically figure out that size for you. You don't necessarily have to explicitly tell that this is an array of size 10. And finally, if you want, you can also do an uninitialized array by typing in int array followed by the open and close bracket, but make sure to define how many elements will belong to this array and put a semicolon at the end. This just means reserve an array with four different elements that are integers and don't set those elements equal to anything currently. These are all valid ways of setting up an array inside of C and C++. And if you went ahead and made it this far, make sure to smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. So let's talk about arrays a little more in depth and we'll get rid of these two so we can focus in on this one array. And we don't need this up top or else we might get some complaints from the compiler. So anything inside of an array is considered an element. So these are actually considered elements of the array and there's 10 elements. And you can use an index to specify which array element you want accessed. So let's use an example here. If I wanted the fourth element of the array to be accessed and displayed, I would type the following. So C out, two lowercase angle brackets, array, and then I want the fourth element. So I'm typing in three and then I'll do an N line to start a new line. So why did I type three instead of four? Well, that's because all array indexes start with zero. 
So make that known that array indexes start at zero. This is important to understand. Otherwise, you might get confused on which element you're actually accessing when you put a number in. But this is a valid way of accessing an element. What I'm saying here is print out to the console array element number three. So this array is of integer type and it's accessing the fourth integer inside of the array. So we should expect the number four to be printed out to us. Let's give this a shot. First, I'll make sure to compile my program. And then next, I'll run my program. And sure enough, we got number four written out to us in the console. So we've successfully been able to access one of the array elements. And that's exactly what we expected. The number four, since we access the fourth element, remember array indexes start with zero. So zero, one, two, three, the fourth element. And to make sure that we drive home the concept of an array, let's print out all of these numbers up top that are located in this array. You can do this by modifying this statement here and putting it inside of a for loop. So if we did for int i equal to zero, i less than 10, since we have the 10 elements, I'll increment i by one every single time and then change this three to an i and that should be enough to get us the entire array printed out. So what this is doing, as we've learned about in the past, for loops allow us to go through iterations and we're starting with zero here, going all the way up to nine before exiting out because we have from zero to nine, giving us 10 different elements. We're gonna increment i every single time through this loop. If you don't know what a for loop is, make sure to go back and watch the for loop video inside of the series. And then we print out each individual index of the array. So let's give this a shot. Make sure to save things. We'll compile and rerun. And this time I have one through 10 written out sequentially. Awesome. So why are arrays important? Imagine, for example, trying to read in a file of some sort with multiple different lines, and every new line was a new piece of information that you had to store in your program. Well, an array would be great in this case because you can count up the number of lines that you have to store and store them individually in each array element. Otherwise, really there's no other way to efficiently store and access the data using anything else besides a structure like an array. All right, and just to drive things home, let's try imagining an array in memory. So it would go something like this. We would have an array and it had various different elements starting with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four to some number, let's call it N. And then what the compiler will do is reserve some memory for you. And it's going to be of whatever data type this array is. So each reservation in memory is an integer. So however many bytes an integer takes up to some number N, and we'll line these up real quick. So you can imagine if I call array zero, I'm just accessing some integer inside of memory, wherever the program has decided to store it. And right next to that integer is another integer, which is element one, element two, element three, so on and so forth. And this memory, again, contains some data. So it's any number, so let's say 12, 55, 77, 44, 42, so on and so forth here. So now we know if we took and said, hey, grab array element number one, that would return an integer type with 55 as the data. And the way this works in memory is, let's say an integer has four bytes to it, the system would reserve a memory location and then whatever size you specified. So let's say we specified an array of five integers we could store, we would have these right here and we would have some address in memory and the system would know the address, whatever it gives it, plus zero is the very first location of memory. And since an integer we found out takes up four bytes, at least on this system, this would be again, address plus four bytes. The next one would be address plus eight bytes. And the next one would be address plus 12 bytes and so on and so forth. Let's say you wanted to access array 
index number two, then the system would know, okay, this array starts at some address. Since this is an integer type, increment over by four bytes every single time. And we wanted to access the second index, which means not the first address, incremented by four bytes, not the second address. I want element number two. So that's the initial address incremented by eight bytes. Hopefully this just gives you a little bit of insight on what's going on in the background as far as memory goes and how arrays are kind of laid out in the system. More importantly, if you just understand what we learned about before this on how to create and access some array, that will help you out quite a bit. I'll show one more thing. Let's create an array again of integers. Of course, you don't have to always use integers. You can use all basic data types as well as structures, which we'll learn about in the future. But for now, we'll use an integer again. We'll create one of size 10 and we won't set it equal to anything. So this is an uninitialized array here. Next, I'm going to type in four. We'll use int i equal to zero once more. i less than 10 and i plus plus to increment i every single time. And between the curly braces, I want to read in 10 numbers from the user. I can do this very easily. So let's do sin and I'll type array i and this with a semicolon. And we can use this same for loop once more in order to print out the numbers that a user gives us. But I'll change sin to C out, change these angle brackets around and put an end line so things look a little better. Let's give this a shot real quick. What this program should do is it's defining an array of integers, 10 of them. Then we're asking the user to enter 10 different integers in or whole numbers, and we'll finally spit out those whole numbers to the user that they supplied. Let's make sure to compile and then run our program. All right, the program's waiting here to enter something in. So I'll enter in some random numbers here and make sure that that's what we get out. All right, so I entered in 10 different numbers and those 10 numbers were read right back to me. So this shows you how powerful an array can be. I'm taking in multiple different numbers, saving them all in one array, and now I can even manipulate it and use it with various different types of loops. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.